When Canada signed the historic NAFTA trade deal in 1994, Mexico was a fairly closed economy with few manufacturing exports. Twenty years later, it's seen as Latin America's economic star and expected to remain so for at least the next decade. Mexico's manufactured exports have grown tenfold since NAFTA, with 80% going to the United States. Recent constitutional changes opened up the country's state-owned energy giant, Pemex. That will bring much-needed investment dollars and technical know-how to the energy sector. Those reforms also give Mexico access to cheaper natural gas from Canada. That could lower electricity costs to Mexican manufacturers by as much as 20%. Chief among those manufacturers, the Mexican auto industry. With $19 billion in new investment, production has doubled in the past five years to 3.2 million vehicles in 2014. By 2020, Mexico will likely be the world's number six auto producer with an annual production of 4.7 million vehicles. I talked with Mexico's Secretary of the Economy, Ildefonso Guajardo, last Friday. He was part of the North American Competitiveness and Innovation Conference. I asked him how he plans to increase his country's trade. Well, definitely our most important trading partners are Canada and the U.S. Uh, basically, almost close to 78% of our trade is with uh, our North American partners. Uh, Mexico has been since NAFTA. Uh, being very intensive in, in trade agreements. We have signed 10 with 45 nations in the world. Uh, that gives us access to a 1 billion market of customers in the world. Uh, we have been, by the instructions of President Peña, uh, being very active in Latin America, trying to really uh, join forces with the countries that are more modern, friendly to investment, free traders like Peru, Chile, and Colombia. We just uh, uh, are uh, integrating the Pacific Alliance it was signed in last February. And, uh, and also we are involved, as you know, with Canada and the U.S. in TPP. In right now, we are aiming at finishing this negotiation in the first quarter of the next year. And there is a commitment to modernize and widen our agreement with Europe that is 14 years old. So Mexico is a, a great platform in the middle of these crossroads between West, East, North and South. One of the things you've achieved is uh, a modernized, highly efficient manufacturing base. How have you done that? What was your approach to making Mexico a destination for manufacturers? Well, that had to do a lot uh, with the decision to join NAFTA because it was a strategic decision to really change the structure of the Mexican economy. Before NAFTA, uh, our economy was 65% oil and minerals and 35% uh, basically manufacturing. In I mean, our exports. Today, we are exporting 83% uh, manufacturing, and in highly complex areas like uh, the automotive uh, industry, like the aerospace industry. And that has a lot to do with the competitive advantage. We have a young labor force, a skillful labor force that has been proven uh, very, very, very uh, uh, useful. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the Canadian companies said it's Mexico Bombardier. Uh, today, 20 years later, after the first investment, they have recognized that uh, originally they were attracted to Mexico because of low cost production facilities. But now they are definitely pricing the high quality of Mexican labor and the capacity of the country to become competitive in manufacturing around the world. And I think that is going to be even more dynamic with the new dimensions of the energy uh, self-sufficiency in the North American region. How much change do you expect to see in your economy uh, and in your trading relationships as you open up your energy market? It's seen as a pivotal moment in Mexico's history. I think that uh, energy reform in Mexico is a game changer. And that comes aligned at the same time with new technologies has transformed the future of the energy sector in North America. And that is one of the main pillars for the future of manufacturing in North America. When you split exports between energy intensive and non-energy intensive, you see that in the last five years, energy intensive exports from North America, have, they have skyrocketed in terms of dynamics, which tells you a lot about uh, where are our strategic advantages in international trade. In fact, increasingly Canada is looking to Mexico as a place uh, that we need to compete with, and we're not always succeeding in the sense of losing uh, some manufacturing, uh, most recently Ford making a decision not to invest in a manufacturing plant in Ontario, choosing instead Mexico. You, you know, we used to have that view in terms of uh, North American competition. Give you an example. We lost a bid to attract Toyota to Mexico and it went to San Antonio, Texas in the U.S. When you look at the numbers after the years, our exports of auto parts to San Antonio from Mexico are quite great, which means that uh, investing one dollar in North America, either be Canada, the U.S. and Mexico, it will have an impact in all the regions. 
And Canada has a, a very interesting advantage in innovation and value-added uh, knowledge and technologies, which can be a plus in the North American market. So you would encourage us not to feel insecure about this, but no, embrace it. No, I think I think that uh, if, if you, when you know the difference with today's world is that uh, you, you you have to recognize that value added in the global value chain is not necessarily had to do with the specific process. We are, we are all part of the global process, and what we have to ensure is that those sectors where we are more competitive are reflected in our contribution uh, to the global value chain and creating high quality jobs and good paying jobs. So on that front, what could we be doing? Uh, we have this working agreement called NAFTA. It's old now, uh, 20 years old, and newer trade agreements look quite different. You could argue that the, the CEDA looks very different in how it's structured. Should we be revisiting and creating a real continental plan to compete? I think there are two, two, high, two ways to go about uh, how to update NAFTA and how to look in the next 20 years of North American competitiveness. One has to do with how we uh, arrange our agendas in order to lower transaction costs in North America, to make North American production process more effective since we are making things together. The other view is how we uh, go about TPP because in a way we are modernizing NAFTA through TPP. 20 years ago you didn't have a charter on electronic trade or 20 years ago, uh, you didn't have as ambitious sharper intellectual property. So there are many things that uh, Canada, the US, and Mexico, through TPP, we can update those things that are in an over advantage to update in, in, in about NAFTA. But the, 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 the basic uh, uh, element in this strategy is to keep reminding ourselves that we have to search in new trade agreements for improving North American competitiveness and to place North America in a highly competitive place in the world market. When you speak to businesses about investing, manufacturing, uh, and direct investing in Mexico, the issue of uh, still high levels of crime, drug-related crime, must come up. Uh, where do you think you are in terms of managing that uh, and resolving it? it? Let me share with you that uh, there are 32 uh, states within the Mexican Federal Republic. And definitely, uh, President Peña has recognized that the, in two or three of them, we still have a long way to go in order to normalize activities, as you know, the state of Guerrero. But there are other 29 federative states in Mexico that are presenting very good conditions about uh, a stable environment, uh, security, where we are getting a lot of investment. In the, la in the first 20 months of President Peña administration, Mexico had attracted almost $50 billion of direct foreign investment which basically even puts higher the, the after NAFTA level that was about $20,000 billion. So what that is telling you is that investors are, are more sophisticated nowadays, and they look into a country, and they, they, they perceive the difference between regions and states. Obviously, President Peña's commitment is that he has to guarantee the same quality of justice and security to all Mexicans. That's why he's highly committed, committed to those two, three states where we have to reinforce our efforts. All right. We need to leave it there. Secretary, we appreciate your time today. Thank you for the invitation.